Greetings, everyone. Well, it's video game update time again. Yes, no sooner did I film my last PS3 game update than I went back to EB Games and picked up a few more. Yeah, and uh, not, not as many as last time, just uh, three. But uh, I figured since I don't have as many disc ones to show you this time, we could take this opportunity to take a look at the various PSN ones I picked up over the past few months as well. Because there's definitely quite a lot of new stuff there. So, we'll start off with the discs, then we'll check out the PSN stuff, and then back here for farewells and bidding adieu in this. So yeah, more PS3 games today on the Multimedia Chronicles. Welcome back. Alrighty, now the good news is a couple of the ones that I picked up today I actually did first impressions videos of many moons ago. So if you check out the description of this YouTube video, you will find links to those first impressions videos. Now this is before the days when I could record in high definition, so they're just, uh, you know, they're upscaled to 720p. Woohoo. But, uh, you know, I did record them in anamorphic widescreen, so, you know, the quality is not that bad, but it's, it's definitely not high def. But it's enough that you can at least get a sense of the game and such and uh, check out some old First Impressions videos. Alrighty, so first up, one of the ones I picked up was uh, a very Quentin Tarantino-inspired game. Uh, very much feels like, um, like a Quentin Tarantino movie, essentially. It's got the same kind of crazy... Uh, grindhouse-y action and uh, style to it. It even has, like, uh, uh, the actual game itself. It even has, like, a film grain and, like, scratches and stuff like that. And there are moments where uh, uh, the film strip breaks and you see the frame melting and stuff like that. Uh, so it very much, it, it's very much a grindhouse-style game with uh, that, that feels like a Quentin Tarantino movie, essentially. So kind of think, like, Kill Bill mixed with Grindhouse, and uh, and there you go. So I'm, of course, talking about W. Yeah, I should probably take that sticker off. Wet <laughs> is what it actually is. There, there we go. You can see it a little better, uh, a little better there. Uh, wet, yes. Wet with blood. With the blood of her enemies. But, uh, yeah, really fun uh, third-person action game with a lot of sort of slow-motion, almost bullet-time style moves you can do and uh, stuff like that. So a lot of fun. I really enjoyed the demo. I've been wanting to pick up the game for ages. And for uh, $7.95, how can you go wrong? Yeah, pretty cool. So we got wet. Definitely going to uh, enjoy playing that. Next up, uh, you saw me... You saw me talk about this collection last time and uh, mentioned that there's also a PS3 one that came out recently. Well, I picked up the PSP, PSP, PS3 version as well. This is the, the latest edition in the Prince of Persia saga, or, or the, the Prince of I. Yes, no, it's just, just called Prince of Persia. This is basically a reboot. Uh, I don't know that it's really related to these ones, but uh, it's kind of its own thing. Heard kind of mixed reviews of it, but, you know, for $5, can't go wrong there. So, yeah, so now I've got all the originals and the latest one. Pretty cool. Um, and I did also make sure that, it, of course, it uh, came with the instructions. So, there we go. Got them in both English and French. Or possibly English and English. I don't know. They both look the same. Anyway, uh, pretty cool. Yeah, here in Canada, when we get the instruction manuals, we usually get two versions of them. We'll get, we'll either get a really thick one that'll have all the different languages in it, or we'll get two. We'll get one in English, one in French. So, kind of cool. Next up, this is another one that I did a first impressions video of, and uh, one of the reasons I wanted to pick this up was because this game just kicked my ass six ways from next Tuesday and I thought boy would this ever be a blast to play on Twitch and everyone could just laugh at how horrible I'm doing uh, really really hard third person shooter but so much fun even though it was really frustratingly difficult in parts um, I had an absolute blast with it and I really really enjoyed it a lot so uh, for 13 bucks couldn't resist picking up Vanquish yeah it's of course Vanquish 
Yes, very good stuff. I'm actually surprised this didn't do better. Like uh, they, they did, they actually put out a couple of demos for it, and uh, I did a first impressions. I think it was a three-part first impressions video of the first demo. Uh, you'll find links to that in the description. And uh, I, I just, I had an absolute blast with it. So I've been wanting to pick it up for ages. I just kept forgetting about it. So anyway, found it in the bargain bins. Finally snagged it. So uh, definitely looking forward to failing and failing and failing for your entertainment and amusement over on Twitch at some point in time. Um, yeah, really want to figure out a way that I can do more regular uh, Twitch sessions and playthroughs and stuff. Um, just got to work out the logistics of time, really. It's not, I have all the equipment. It's all good to go. Everything's ready. I've got a three-year license on XSplit, which is the software that I use to do the streaming and the overlays and stuff like that. Um, so that's all good to go. I'm ready to rock and roll. It's, it's really just a matter of finding the time to do so. Uh, in the meantime, I'll just keep building up the game collection. So when we do finally get around to it, I'll have a shit ton of stuff to play. Speaking of which, let's head on over to, uh the aforementioned X split and take a look on the PS3 and see what kind of goodies I picked up recently on PSN. Greetings and welcome to the wonderful world of X split. This is what I use to do all of my, uh, my video streaming and live game stuff over on Twitch. It's also just great as a general recorder that lets me easily record the PS3. Yay. Let's move down here. And I can move myself around with the greatest of ease. Oh, look at it go. Yay. Wee. All right. Oakley dokley. So let's take a look here at uh, the old PSN selection. Now, as I mentioned in the uh, last update video, there was uh, quite a lot of stuff was available through the um, uh, PSN store. Duh. What am I talking? Sorry, I got distracted and my mind wandered. Uh, PSN had a, a, a massive flash sale where they had a whole pile of games, uh, like older games available for less than a dollar each. So, uh, yeah, certainly couldn't pass that one up. So I guess we'll start with the PS1. Just scroll down a little ways. Uh, where do we leave? Uh, yeah, so I got this one. Uh, Wild Arms. Pretty cool. Wild Arms 2. Uh huh. Dino Crisis 2, even though I still have to play Dino Crisis 1, but uh, I've been told it's quite scary and uh, I will enjoy it, and everyone watching will enjoy watching me being scared, so I thought, well, might as well get the second one since it's ridiculously cheap. And it's never going to be that cheap again, so why not? I got Clonoel, D Door to Phantom Isle. I actually did play the demo of this many, many moons ago. And uh, <clears throat> really enjoyed it a lot. So I'll just move the mic over a little bit. Um, yeah, I thought it was really good. Uh, it's it's kind of the... They refer to it as a 2.5D platformer. Because it's essentially a side-scroller, but in 3D environments. And there are parts where you can jump into the background and get stuff and things like that. It's a really, really cool uh, game. I got Populous The Beginning. Um, I actually have the original Populous on the Amiga, and I used to play it quite a bit. Um, bit of a daunting game. Never finished it because there's 999 levels. Yeah, I think I played maybe the first 30 or so. But, uh, yeah, always really enjoyed it and would come back for more quite often. So I thought, uh, why not get the one of the later versions? And then uh, just uh, yesterday, I actually picked up Star Wars Dark Forces for... It wasn't less than a dollar. It was like, I don't know, a dollar fifty, I think is what it worked out to. But uh, right now for uh, uh, the May the 4th celebration, every year May the 4th is the big Star Wars day for Star Wars fans. Uh, so PSN is having a May the 4th uh, sale where they uh, marked down a lot of existing Star Wars games and added some new ones, which we'll take a look at right now, actually. So going from the top down here, we got uh, Star Wars Bounty Hunter, which I've talked about before. Uh, one of my favorite PS2 Star Wars games. Uh, basically tells the backstory of Jango Fett and how he, uh, you know, a lot of his early missions leading up to when he got the contract to be the template for the clone army uh, in the, you know, the, the whole thing with Kamino and everything. But uh, really good uh, third-person actioner, really puts you in the world of Star Wars, and uh, I think one of the best games to come out of the, the prequels, uh, like directly related to the prequel movies. 
Uh, then we got Star Wars Episode Three: Revenge of the Sith. Now, I do have both of those on uh, PlayStation 2. I basically just grabbed them here for convenience so I can play them a little more easily than having to hook up the PS2 and uh, use the old wireless controller and also be able to stream them on Twitch a lot more easily and uh, without having to fuss around with the uh, uh, analog composite video, but rather having the uh, you know direct component video or HDMI connection to give you nice clean digital quality of these classic games. And got uh, Star Wars Racer Revenge. I do not have this one on the PS2, so this one's new to me. Uh, Star Wars Starfighter, I do have this one on the PS2. Uh, always really liked it, was never able to defeat the final boss in it. Uh, it's, it's, you know, a fairly straightforward flying and shooting game throughout most of it. But then the last boss is ridiculously difficult, like the difficulty just goes through the roof. So I might, uh, might just have to tackle that one again on Twitch and uh, you can all enjoy me getting frustrated about it. And then I picked up Gradius V. Those of you who watch uh, Multimedia Chronicles Retro will know I was always a huge fan of Life Force on the NES. And uh, Life Force itself was, of course, a spin-off of the Gradius series. It uses the same power-up system and uh, is essentially part of the series. Just kind of a side story, if you will. But uh, I always loved Life Force. So I thought, yeah, I'll pick up Gradius V. Why not? And I uh, played a bit of it last night, and it definitely has the old-school Life Force feel. Uh, even some of the music is is the same music, just you know upgraded and beefed up and stuff. So it's pretty cool. And then we had uh, Katamari Damashi. This was part of the uh, less than a buck sale. Um, I do have this on PS2, but again, just uh, put it on here for convenience. Uh, and for less than a dollar, how can you go wrong? Now, when I say less than a dollar, I mean less than a dollar. I mean, I don't think I paid more than 80 cents for any games I got in that sale. Now, these ones were not part of that sale. These ones I got. Um, outside of that, they're part of, well, the Star Wars ones are the Star Wars sale. This one I just got because it's Gradius. Uh, so yeah, so this is part of the less than a dollar sale. And then we also got uh, Twisted Metal Black, which is actually one of the first PS2 games I ever played and the first Twisted Metal game I ever played. Always really liked that one. And I got Manhunt, which uh, again, I do have on the PS2, but uh, again, got here for convenience and for streaming convenience. Uh, then I also got Castlevania Lament of Innocence. So there you go, just another addition to the Castlevania collection. I have pretty much, I think I have all the Castlevania games that are available on PSN right now. PS1, PS2, and uh, except for the PS3 stuff, because, uh, you know, obviously I want to get those on disc if I can. But uh, yeah, so there you go. So those are all the new PS2 games. Quite a nice uh, selection of stuff. And then, of course, as you already know, I've got the, all the Grand Theft Auto games including the uncut version of San Andreas before it got censored and, and or removed. So I do have that. And then, uh, of course, we've got Siren, Pale Frame, and all this. Yeah, so anyway. Uh, minis, no new minis. I've still just got these same three. Uh, now, PS3. Tons of PS3 stuff. Let's uh, let's start at the top here. So part of the Star Wars sale, I picked up Angry Birds Star Wars. Uh, the gang from Geeky was lamenting me, saying that... Uh, <coughs> You know, why did I uh, get that? That's really loud. Hold on. Let me move down here. Okay, we'll move down to Raiden 4 Overkill. Um, yeah, so anyway, I got to Angry Bridge Star Wars. It was 10 bucks, And everybody was saying, why did you pay 10 bucks for that? It's like 3 bucks on mobile platforms. Like, well, I don't have any mobile platforms, first off, because fuck smartphones and tablets. I hate those things, as anyone who knows me will know. And um, have no use for them, basically. Uh, and, you know, I played a bit of it over on Facebook when it first debuted, and I really enjoyed it. And uh, then, you know, essentially to get the whole game, it's pay-to-play, whatever. Um, so, yeah, but, I mean, normally the PS3 version goes for, like, 30 or 40 bucks. So, 10 bucks is actually a good price for this particular version of it. Plus, I know Rosie will love it. She has been bugging me to get Angry Birds Star Wars for ages. So she's going to be overjoyed when she sees that there. <clears throat> then, of course, I picked up Raiden 4 Overkill, which is um, essentially a direct port of Raiden 4, the arcade game, but uh, with some additional play modes, new power-ups, and stuff like that. Uh, just good old-fashioned top-down uh, shoot shooter action. Um, I love old-school shooters, you know, bullet hell shooters, as they come to be known. Uh, Raiden 4 is definitely one of the kings of the bullet hell genre. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and I played a little bit of that last night and got my ass royally handed to me. 
And then, uh, as part of the Less Than a Buck sale, got all four episodes of Jurassic Park, the game. Now, this is essentially an interactive movie. Uh, most of it is quick time events and such. See if there's any... No, not really. Yeah. And then uh, got all five episodes of Back to the Future. Episode one is down below. It's it. it I wish you could just sort by title. Like, come on, alphabetical sorting. Is that so so much to ask for, PSN? Seriously. Um, but yeah, uh, it would be really nice to be able to do that, but we can't. We can only sort by date they were added, which is bullshit. So anyway, I played the demo of episode one years ago, so that's way down in the bottom of the list somewhere. And same thing with Sam and Max, Beyond Time and Space. Got all five episodes of that. Episode one is buried down there somewhere. Ditto for Sam and Max, The Devil's Playhouse. Played the demo of episode one a while back, so it's buried. We'll get to that when we get to that. Then we got the Mortal Kombat Arcade Collection. Ooh, spooky. Then we got Tokyo Jungle. Rosie loves Tokyo Jungle. She just... She's been playing the crap out of this, and we've been playing two-player on it a little bit. Uh, we both play as Pomeranians. But essentially, it's a post-apocalyptic game in which the um, all of humanity has been wiped out, and it's nothing but the animals left. So it's the animals. So you play as various animals trying to survive and uh, and hunt and mark your ter you know claim your territory and uh, breed and create more offspring and, and stuff like that. So just a really cool... Um, you know, as if the jungle became the entire world. Uh, it's an indie game, so, I mean, it's it's not perfect. It does have a few little technical glitches as far as uh, controls go. But overall, it's it's pretty solid. It's, it's a lot of fun. And uh, Rose and I have certainly been having a lot of fun with it. And then I've got... Oh. Hold on. God, these games are all so loud. Sorry. Okay, I got both Matt Hazard games. <laughs> yes, I got... I got Mad Hazard, Bloodbath and Beyond, and Eat Lead, Return of Mad Hazard. Let's go back to nice, quiet Tokyo Jungle. Okay, and then next up, we got Tales of Monkey Island. All five. Got one at the bottom, because I played the demo a while ago. Oh, look, there's the rest of Sam and Max. There we go. And Back to the Future. And finally, I also picked up Galaga Legions DX, which is basically, if you played uh, Pac-Man Deluxe DX, you'll know what to expect from this. It's essentially a hyperactive, crazy, just insane version of Galaga. And uh, and it's a, an absolute blast. I've actually been having a, a ton of fun with it. And uh, yeah, so we'll probably do some Twitch sessions of that at some point just for fun. And then, uh, yeah, then I just grabbed a bunch of demos like Ethan Meteor Hunter, Crimson Land, Hyper Void, Spirit Outbreak, and stuff like that. And uh, once again, for those who are confused, this is not the PSN version of Killzone. This actually is on the disc for the trilogy set, but uh, it, you have to install it to the hard drive. So it's, I guess, the same thing as if you got it on PSN, except it's the downloading and you just install it on the disc. And there you go. So let's head back on over to uh, to the chair, and we'll uh, we'll do our wrap up, shall we? So there you go, quite uh, quite a pile of games. Holy moly, old and new. Just it's getting to the point now where it's, I feel like that I have more games than I'm ever going to have time to play in my entire life. But I don't know. We'll we'll do the best we can. Uh, there's definitely a few there I want to do playthroughs of. And on Twitch and uh, and whatnot, and have you all join in on the fun and check it out. And those of you who don't go over to Twitch, those playthroughs will, of course, be posted here as well on YouTube, so you can enjoy them here too. Alrighty, that is it from me to you for now. So until next time, thanks for watching, and sayonara. Just before we go, I'd like to take a moment to thank all my Patreon sponsors. Thank you, especially uh, Kyle Pellegree, who is my current highest level sponsor i uh, definitely appreciate your support and everyone else who's uh who's come out to become a sponsor of the channel um yeah if you'd like to join in uh please head on over to the patreon page and contribute i mean no amount is too big no amount is too small and it all goes right into the show here so i can provide you with even more cool stuff to enjoy Alrighty, see you next time